Manny Lopez from Manila. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, to my distinguished uh, colleagues. Sa ating pong mga bisita po, uh, magandang umaga po at uh, mga kasamahan dun sa Zoom. Uh, I will try to encapsulate in uh, the very short uh, three minutes uh, the time that is allocated to me. Uh, and uh, I would like to address this um, uh, question uh, primarily to the NHA uh, General Manager, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, first of all, I am sure and I'm quite certain that you have uh, received and are aware that there is a demolition order by the city of Manila dated uh, September uh, 1, Mr. Chairman, uh, to the uh, residents of uh, 27 uh, building uh, uh, occupants uh, that houses around 1,700 dwelling units uh, to a minimum of 5,000 families, Mr. Chair. Meron uh, pong demolition order and uh, if I may briefly say, nung, September, nung uh, 2014, there was a letter of condemnation. So as early as that, meron, kinundem na po yung building na dalawang putpito. This is uh, NHA uh, property and uh, there is a great risk that is posed uh, by the dilemma that we are encountering right now, Mr. Chair. Uh, roughly around 5,000 families or around 25,000 people. Yung dalawang putpitong uh, gusali na yan uh, that was uh, built by NHA and uh, most of it under the property of NHA is now uh, being uh, uh, con has been condemned and there is a demolition order. Ang uh, tanong ko lang po, uh, una ko sa lahat, uh, ano po ang uh, plano ng NHA uh, dito, very briefly lang ho. And then, mamaya ako na usasag, uh, I'll make a follow-up uh, question. Dahil, alam nyo po, uh, napaka uh, malaking kahihiyan, morally speaking, dahil kapag may nangyari pong trahedya dyan, na huwag naman po sanang mangyari, eh, huwag naman po sanang umabot during our care. And the worst part is, we are all knowledgeable about what is going to happen. So, Mr. General Manager, uh, opo. Sir Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you very much, Your Honor, for the question. Uh, on the first question, I'd like to confirm that NHA has full knowledge that this is our property. And at the same time, we are also confirming that there has been a demolition order issued by the city government of Manila, as well as the Department of Public Works and Highways. So true enough, we confirm to those documents, and in fact, it was also our assessment, Your Honor, that indeed after several years of uh, having those buildings constructed, it came to a point of its life uh, span that indeed the, those buildings, the 27 buildings, with some 1,760 families, to be exact, and the 27 buildings are now subject for demolition. On the second question, Your Honor, what's the plan of NHA? Uh, we are also fully aware that we are legally and morally bounded because almost 50% of the settlers of the 1,760 are all still active members and active uh, paying beneficiaries to NHA. So we are fully aware and we, we acknowledge the fact that we need to plan out for the reconstruction on site. So based on our discussion with our good congressman, uh, Manny Lopez, as well as the recommendation of my district head and the regional managers, that most of the people living in our uh, Vitas Katuparan would really love to have an on-site development. And that is also the direction of the National Housing Authority, Your Honor. We would not want to displace all of these people. Now, what is the plan? First and foremost is that based on the pronouncement of the president that there will be no demolition without relocation, we shall abide with that. So we will also make some representations before the city government of Manila, as well as with the DPWH upon its technical recommendation that up until there is no, demol there is no relocation yet, we will make the representation in compliance to the instruction of the president. Now the plan on a long term, 
uh, of the 1,760, around 700 families, Your Honor, had already been taken out by the National Home Mortgage Finance. So technically, the 700 families are now paying its loans and amortization with the National Home Mortgage, National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation. And largely, around 80, 800 uh, families are still uh, connected and paying with the National Housing Authority. So my, propos my proposition and my plan, Your Honor, in so far as the rehabilitation on on-site development is NHA is willing to fund the first phase of our project, and that is the, the accommodation of 800 more or less families in the amount of 1 billion, and we shall be adopting a mid-rise or high-rise building on-site development for Bitas Katuparan. That is the plan, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, can I just make one uh, follow-up question? Okay. Thank that you, last po. Question. Alam nyo po, uh, very timely since you are uh, the chairman, dahil as early as 2016, when you're, uh, 2017, when your uh, mother, the former president and the uh, former speaker, was a uh, very cooperative po, and uh, meron po kaming, dahil hindi naman kaila sa inyo na ang uh, tundo po ay nagiging pugad ng uh, mga kapatid natin na wala pong tirahan, kaya po uh, pagpaumanin ninyo kung medyo nagiging mariin ang aking uh, panawagan. At uh, papasalamat ako, ako kay, uh, kay dating Pangulong uh, Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I'm uh, very grateful and uh, very happy to hear uh, your uh, pronouncements and uh, your commitment. And in fact, uh, you are right. Uh, this will be the first uh, in-city uh, relocation uh, in the metropolis and another first uh, uh, kind of uh, project that you are humble enough not to disclose. Dahil, uh, during our initial discussion, you have uh, presented uh, a very modern high-rise 19-story uh, building that I will uh, uh, furnish the committee. Ito pong mga drawing na ito na sana po naman uh, maging, uh, magiging sustainable at uh, world-class po ito. At uh, sila po ang, uh, ang uh, magpapatakbo yung mga maninira, maninira po, maninirahan. So uh, I just want to let this uh, committee uh, uh, to know that um, yun po, uh, the threat is imminent and uh, I think the urgency is of uh, utmost importance. And uh, through this committee, sana po, uh, and we got this commitment, eh, mapatupad po sa lalong uh, madaling panahon, Mr. Secretary. That's all, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, and thank you for the oppo opportunity and reply, uh, sirs. Thank you, Congressman Lopez. Next to ask questions is the Honorable Eileen Rosas to Zoom. Eileen Rosas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, naririnig po ba ko? Opo, naririnig po, loud and clear. Please continue. Medyo mahina po kasi yung, um, yung reception dito, yung tunog ninyo dito. Mr. Chair, pakisabi na lang po sa resource person na lakasan yung boses. Okay, narinig po kayo dito, loud and clear po. Mr. Chair, first na tanong po, kasi ang NHA ay nag-receive ng 632.601 million this year. 29.16% down from its budget for 2020. Ibig sabihin, nabawasan pa po. Does Secretary Del Rosario think that we can reach the housing target in 2021 with such a meager amount, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honors, uh, actually, uh, over the years, the housing uh, agencies are receiving a budget uh, which is alarmingly uh, getting uh, lower every year but uh, nevertheless uh, we strategize uh, the department is strategizing even uh, with the lowering of the budget we are trying our best to keep up with our uh, pdp target every year uh, we are supposed to accomplish 1.4 million uh, housing units for the informal settled families from 
2017 to 2022 for a period of five years. And uh, so far, we are ab averaging about 200,000 housing units uh, every year, uh, Your Honors. Uh, of course, uh, the housing department uh, largely depends on the budget allocation, but uh, by using our uh, uh, financial uh, component of the uh, National Shelter Program, by oh. utilizing the resources of the, uh, the uh, Pagibig Fund, the Social Housing Finance Corporation, and uh, of course, the National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation, we are somewhat uh, hitting close to our target of about uh, 87 to 90 percent, uh, Your Honors. Mr. Chair, lumalabas po dito sa budget ng DISHWOOD na mas prioridad ng gobyerno yung pagpapatayo ng malalaking infrastruktura kesa sa pabahay para sa maralita, Mr. Chair. Kasi ang laki nga ng budget natin sa infra, pero apparently, etong DISHWOOD o yung housing na may backlog na housing backlog for families na 4.5 million at may target na 131,000 housing units. Pero yun nga, apparently, meron tayong infraspe, uh, nilagay na malaking uh, infra, pero hindi para yun sa mga maralita natin na nangangailangan ng pabahay, Mr. Chair. Now, uh, going on to my next question, kaugnay po ito sa Joint Resolution Number 2, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yung status ng implementasyon ng resolution na ito, particular po sa mga idle homes no, sa buong bansa, meron po bang mga na-distribute na, na-awardan na, at meron po bang datos ang um, issue uh, dito, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I request that the uh, young manager of NSA be recognized. Okay, the general manager of housing is recognized to answer that question. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, please, thank you, please, Mr. Chair. Please uh, just go directly to the point. Okay? Uh, there are already uh, housing units awarded already, Your Honor, insofar as the old APPNP is concerned, and that is pursuant to resolution number two. Uh, Arlene? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, tinatanong ko po kasi um, certificate, certificate of award, particular sa Pandi, no? Sa Pandi, sa occupied housing units, sa Pandi, Bulacan, familiar po dito ang NHA. Isang taon na po ang nakalipas, yung proseso po na nabigyan ng certificate of award at entry pass, apparently, hindi pa nakakapagbigay. Sa totoo lang, Mr. Chair, ang haba na nang inabot natin dito mula sa 2017 na joint resolution na pinaghirapan natin na maipasa tapos ngayon yung report para dito sa uh, mga housing units kung nabigyan na sila or ano na ang nangyari wala po tayong uh, direkta pang nababalitaan sa NHA except or isang bestes po na nakapunta tayo doon na namimigay sila na hindi rin naman ipinaalam sa atin namimigay sila ng certificate of award kasama ang um, batalyon o isang military uh, unit kasama po ang mayor kaya uh, napag-alaman lang po natin sa mga residente kaya tayo nakarating nalaman natin na nagbibigay doon sila ng certificate of award but ngayon po kaya po natin tinatanong ito gusto po natin pabilisin yung proseso dahil ang tagal-tagal-tagal-tagal na nito. Gaano pa ba yung kailangan natin, uh, ano pa ba ang kailangan natin gawin para ma-fast track nito, Mr. Chair? Paano po maia-award no, sa mga tao yung occupied housing units dun sa pandipulakan? Okay, please answer. Uh, Ma'am Arlene, that's your, your time has elapsed. Uh, the... Mr. Chair, yes. pa-follow up na lang po ako sa katuparan yung kanina na demolition, uh, threat of demolition sa Tondo after this. Okay, well, that, that will be your last last question, okay? Uh, uh, Mr. NHA, Chair? Please answer. Uh, after NHA, we'll Sir, give you one more question and then... Na yun, kasi ang, ang issue po doon, demolition amidst the pandemic time. Napakahirap po, kahit po yung sinasabi nila na 800 na pamilya na maapektuhan nun, 
napakahirap para sa mga pamilya yon. Lumapit po ang mga tao doon. In fact, hawak po po yung demolition corridor na nakalagay na ibinigay sa kanila July 22, 2020. Ngayon po, nakalagay dito, kailangan mag-comply sila kasi at least um, may inform sila five days before the start of the actual demolition. Tapos, yung, kung sino yung magdemolish, tapos within 30 days daw ang start of demolition work. Bakit po tayo nagdemolish sa panahon ng pandemya, Mr. Chair? Uh, please answer. Uh, I think she posted two questions. Uh, can you answer both questions, please? Thank you, Your Honor. There are already 300 families in Pandi that got the award from NHA. And there is only one condition, Your Honor, that we ask of them, to sign a loan document because the Pandi housing and all the APPNP housing is a recoverable uh, project. Therefore, everyone should pay. The only reason why we haven't awarded further, Your Honor, because our beneficiaries would not also execute and sign a loan documents. If they will sign, we will award, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And to, our, to, our, to our question about the, the, demo, the demolition, can you answer that more specifically? Uh, we will make the representation, Your Honor, before the city government of Manila because the demolition order was issued by the city government of Manila and as well as uh, recommended technically by the Department of Public Works and Highways. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kung Sir Chair, sure, pwede ba mag-ano mag, tayo ng, ng moratorium for demolition dito, they, they dito will, sa they, they will the answer. They, will, they will make representations to the city of Manila because that's where the order came from and they will they will take it up. Uh, next to interpolate is the... Mr. Chair, sure, and list me for the second Michael round, Julia. please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Congressman Revilla, strike. Thank you, Erlene. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When, uh, 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 Mr. Chair and uh, to, to our uh, esteemed members of this committee, uh, to our distinguished guests and uh, from the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development Family, uh, good morning. Uh, Matagal na po talaga na naghihintay ang mamayang Pilipino, lalo na sa ating pong mga tinatawag na, na itinatawag sa ilalim ng ating saligang batas na underprivileged and homeless citizen. Na, nagkaka, na magkaroon ng disente at maabot kayang pabahay. Sila yung mga tinatawag natin uh, ngayon na informal settlers, families or ISF. Na tinatayang aabot ng mga kanina, binanggit ni Congressman Ambrosas na mga 4.5 to 6 million Uh, napakarami pong pamilya ang nangangailangan ng pabahay at uh, at sa pagkakatatag po ng Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development sa ilalim ng pangumuno ng ating mga Pangulong Duterte ay marami ang naniniwala na magkakaroon na nakatuparan ng wakas, sa wakas ang pangarap na pabahay ng ating pamamayan. Uh, actually, in the Committee of Housing and Urban Development, We have just approved yesterday the rental housing subsidy program to give assistance. Those uh, will be displaced under uh, certain conditions. We are currently discussing the national housing development production and financing program, which aims to provide the necessary uh, funds to implement a program that will ensure the availability of decent and affordable housing to our citizen. Uh, this represent representations are. Uh, Uh, so strongly support the proposed 2021 budget for the issued at uh, maring ko rin pong uh, hinihiling sa ating pong, uh, mga kasamang na dito na kung maaari po ay eh, matagdagan po ang budget nito. Alam po natin na meron pong uh, programa na balik probinsya bagong pag-asa ang ating pong uh, mahal na Pangulo na tingin ko po kinakailangan pong mabudgetan ito dahil uh, ito po yung makakatulong sa ating mga kababayan na nandiyan na po, na, na bumalik na sa kanilang po mga probinsya na wala pa rin pong permanenteng tirahan. Actually, wala po akong questions. I just want, want to manifest my support. Uh, kung pwede po, ay uh, nirequest ko sa ating membro ng committee nito na madagdagan po at uh, masuportahan po natin ang budget ng 
ng uh, Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development 2021 budget. Maraming salamat po at uh, magandang umaga po sa atin lahat. Thank you very much, Congressman Strike Revilla. Next to profound questions is the Honorable Franz Castro. Congressman Franz Castro from Zoom. Congressman Franz Castro will be asking questions through Zoom. Can you hear us, Congressman Franz Castro? If she's not there, the Honorable Ferdi Gaite. Honorable Gaite. Is Honorable Gaite, can you hear us? Oh, wala na. Congressman Gaite is not there. Is she, is, are you there? Uh, okay, next is the, the Honorable Jam Boranda from Iloilo. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone, uh, members of the esteemed colleagues, and of course, a family from the Dishwood. Um, I got uh, run through with your budget since 2016 during the time of uh, President Duterte. At saka nakikita ko po na decreasing ang pondo ninyo. Priority po naman ng programa ni Mahal ng Pangulo ang pagpabahay sa mga maralita at sa pagbigay ng uh, pabahay sa mga empleyado ng gobyerno. Kaya, Mr. Chair, I know you are well bent no, on lowering the house need now estimated at uh, 6.57 million by year 2022. We know that this deficit has become worse since we have more people who lost their jobs and homes with COVID-19 pandemic. And sadly, even more face inevitable eviction in the days to come. Marami ang napauwi sa mga respective provinces nila, nawawala ng trabaho, at yung mga landlords nila hindi na sila tinatanggap dahil ilang buwan na na hindi sila nakakabayad. Especially yung mga nandito sa Metro Manila. The Dishwood and its key shelter agencies will play a very important role in carrying out the government's national shelter program and to ensure that we have a more concrete housing strategy in the face of this pandemic and worsening economic crisis. Iloilo province and city alone, we have assisted many displaced families and locally stranded individuals who have left their rented homes, sana sabi ko na, dito sa Metro Manila. So Mr. Chair, it saddens me that affordable and safe housing, which is very basic need, is once again given a minimal budget for 2021. I do not know how this budget would be enough to encourage the production of more housing units and address the housing gap. Ilang pabahay lamang po ba ang maitatayo ng budget ng departamento ninyo with 3.68 billion kung saan dalawang billion lamang dito ay para sa production under NHA. And to operationalize 16 region, originally meron tayo ngayon 9. We, you are asking for additional 7 regional offices. Napakaliit at napakasakit sa lahat ng departamento with only 0.08% sa pondo o sa national budget ang nanailalaan sa, sa departamento ninyo. To come to think, na very, very basic po ang human need and shelter. Mr. Chairman, I believe that this department, which is very close to my heart, deserves more. Alam niyo po ba, naging staff po ako sa Senado ni Senator JV. Ipinaglaban po ni Senator JV kasama si Congressman Albi Benitez ng Lower House na ipasa ang batas sa pagbuo ng ating Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. I have seen how much reform has been made under the leadership of Secretary Del Rosario and GM Escalada. Napaka 
laki po ng ipinagbago ng ating housing department mula ng mailantad ang lahat ng kabulukan sa pagpapatayo ng mga pabahay ng nakalipas na administrasyon. One only has to compare the old structure with the new structures built from AFP-PNP, housing program under President Duterte's administration to know the capacity of this department to uplift the lives and dignity of Filipino people. Talaga naman po napakaganda at disente ng mga ginawa nilang pabahay. And this is why we know that we can count on the leadership of Secretary De Rosario and GM Escalada. To manage a budget that will deliver at least double than their accomplishment last year, 195,469 average units per year, and 777,879 units from July 2016 to June 2020. Kung sana ang production all over the country is at 1 million units per year of socialized, low-cost, and economic housing, Napakaganda sana pag ganon, Mr. Chair. We have to restore the budget of the department. Let us give them more. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to run through some key points for consideration of the Department of Budget. But Mr. Chair, wait lang po. To ensure that we can offer assistance and leniency and moratorium loan payments for those who are unable to pay for their housing units. Example, OFWs who, will be lo who lost their jobs. Baka po pwede extend natin ang moratorium of more than three months, no? but longer. Let us improve partnership with private sector and LGUs so we can build more public housing. Identify more properties that can be used for public housing. Balik probinsya, balik pag-asa program should be encouraged as if to be benefit for all, it will be beneficial for all if we can increase the budget for this. Let us set up an effective mechanism for applications and identification of beneficiaries dahil napakarami po ang nagtatanong sa amin kung paano sila makakapasok sa programang ito. Lastly, offer more housing programs and opportunities for middle income earners and working class, especially for essential employees in government service like Inasabi natin, AFP, PNP, BFP, teacher, and of course, for all our FWs. Kasi sila na lang ang naguhulog, no? Sila na lang ang maghulog, pero limited naman ng affordable yung housing project sa kanila. So, with this, Mr. Chair, alam ko, tapos na po yung panahon ko. Salamat, Mr. Chair. I also hope that the budget for housing would be equitable, as well, not only be for the benefit of informal settler families in Metro Manila, but also for those in Visayas in Mindanao. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Miranda. Miranda, uh, next to interpolate is Congresswoman Sherry Antan. Congresswoman Sherry Antan. Congresswoman Sherry Antan. Congressman Abdullah Dimaporo. Congressman Adula de Maporo. Congressman Abdula de Maporo. Congressman Kiko Benitez. Congressman Kiko Benitez. Congressman Kiko Benitez. Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman Abdullah Dimaporo is on online. Okay, Congressman Abdullah Dimaporo, you are recognized. Nako. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. We can hear each other. Uh, we can, uh, persons in the room. Upang hindi na naman na kong uh, dimuboro. 
If Congressman Di Maporok, we cannot, can, is he online? Ha? Huh? Wala, andyan. Ipo kayo marinig, uh, Kong Di Maporok. Pero hindi natin marinig. Okay, uh, we will go to Congressman Gaite for again. Ferdy, Congressman Gaite, we skipped you a while ago when we called you. Can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, Congressman Gaite, you have three minutes. Please start. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, salamat sa pagkakataong ito. Although I can hear uh, Congressman Dimaporo, apparently yesterday we had the same uh, difficulty in connecting with the uh, in uh, Zoom, uh, those in Zoom na nagkakarinigan, pero with Ay. COVID. Anyway, may uh, lang po yung mga katanungan. Uh, pinatupad na po yung um, uh, Department of Housing, uh, Human Settlements and Urban Development. Ang pagkaunawa ko, uh, yung mga ilang ahensya na pumalog dito, yung uh, key shelter agencies, uh, include the HADZ, the HLURB, uh, National Housing Authority, uh, Pag-ibig, among others. Uh, so far po, ano, ho na ba, ano na po status ng implementation? Nakapagbuo na ba ng bagong uh, personal structure? Uh, ano hong effect nito do sa mga employees, especially those uh, contractual workers, who I believe are uh, significant uh, insofar as uh, uh, employment in the HADC, HLURB, uh, Pag-ibig, and the NHA are concerned. Meron na ho bang accommodation para sila ay magkaroon ng uh, regularisasyon ng kanilang trabaho. So, Mr. Chair, uh, sa ating kagalang-galang na mga uh, bisita sa umagang ito, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair yes, please answer. Uh, actually, uh, Your Honors, uh, we have uh, already placed the existing personnel to our present structure and we have established the vacancies. We are now uh, recruiting uh, applicants and uh, getting their applications and uh, hopefully we'll be able to fill up about 700 uh, positions in two, three years time. But uh, we have started the process already of uh, recruitment and we have received about 9,000 uh, applications already as of this month, uh, Your Honors. Thank you. Congressman Gaite. Uh, salamat po, Mr. Chair. Uh, ang uh, isang uh, kinaka ina, um, inaalala ng ating mga kawanilyan noon pa man ay yung problema ng pag, pag, uh, bago, pagtatayo ng bagong departamento na uh, maari bunga ng reorganisasyon ay magdudulot na naman ng uh, uh, dislocation or worse, uh, tanggalan. Kaya uh, na, na-raise ko po itong concern na to dahil alam naman natin yung servisyo ng papahay napakahalaga isa sa mga uh, batayang social services na dapat ang gobyerno ay nangunguna. Uh, nevertheless, uh, ang isa po pang katanungan, uh, may hakbang na po ba ginagawa ang ating uh, iba't ibang ahensya na nasa, na nasa ilalim ng departamento uh, tulad ng uh, GOCCs na NHA uh, pag-ibig na dahil ang kategorya nila ay government owned and control corporation uh, hindi sila nasama dito sa salary standardization law 5 or SSL 5 as uh, uh, as they have raised since 2010 walang wage adjustment sila because they are exempted being a government-owned and controlled corporation. The agency tasked to provide the Compensation Position Classification System, or CPCS, is the GCG, or Governance Commission for uh, GOCCs. Uh, what steps have the uh, uh, depart, uh, department uh, had, uh, the secretary, Mr. Chair, ano na bang mahakpang ginawa para uh, yung uh, suwiranin ng walang adjustment ng sweldo ng ating uh, libu-libong mga kawani na bahagi ng departamento bilang attache agencies uh, para to make uh, representation with the GCG to address this uh, uh, decade-long uh, problem, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. That, that will be your last question because we are past the three minutes already. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask the Chair. General Manager of NHA and the CEO of Pag-ibig to answer that specific okay. question. Okay. So for the benefit of uh, Congressman Gaites, so his questions will be answered properly. We are recognizing the attached agencies. Thank you, Your Honor. In behalf of NHA, Your Honor. Please make your answers concise. Okay, so at least the, our, our colleagues through Zoom will be clearly noti uh, notified. In behalf of NHA, Your Honor, there are no dis dislocation on the part of NHA. We have hired and promoted several of our rank and files and your senior officers to a higher position first. Second is we are now entering into our second phase of the reorganization and the rationalization. So we assure this committee, Your Honor, that there is no dis dislocation and there is no displacement of contract of service and job orders. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank Chair, you. Yes, uh, please. Yung uh, tanong po 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 na ano na po mga kapang ginawa ng ating mga uh, mga pinuno ng ating mga hensya regarding naman dun sa implementation ng compensation position classification system na bunga nga ng kategorya ng mga naturang ahensya na GOCC na hindi sila kasama doon sa salary, uh, kamakailang pagpapatupad ng salary standardization law uh, which, uh, ito na yung fifth uh, amendment, or SSL 5, which we call it. Ano na bang ginagawang hakbang ng uh, ating uh, mga ahensya, Mr. Chair, para itong dek dekada na, na hindi, uh, it, this is not only for NHA, this is not only for pag but include other uh, GOCCs as well. But as uh, heads of agencies, uh, anong steps sa po ba ang ginagawa ng ating mga pinuno para i-address itong uh, sulirin na ito, Mr. Chair? Your Honor, uh, one major step that NHA has done so far, Your Honor, is the only way is to comply with the requirements of GCG, and that is pursuant to the position reclassification and ranking of position, Your Honor. So we cannot enjoy what has been provided for under national government agencies because by character and by charter, we are a corporation. So we will religiously comply the requirements so that we shall qualify to be small, medium, and large corporation. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Gaite. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, panghuli lang, uh, as I yung understand, pala, uh, yung yung isang corporation, Mr. Chair, uh, hanggang 2025 na lamang ang uh, charter ng uh, NHA. Ano rin yung mga hakbang na ginagawa para ma-extend, kung kailangan ma-extend ang uh, life uh, ng... Uh, Congressman Gaite, you have exceeded your time by, by another two minutes. Please make that your last Ay, question, sorry, sir. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Ito mahina yung... Ito yes, mahina but the, other, yung the others are, are uh, following the, the three-minute rule. Please make that your last question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Medyo mahina yung audio. Anyway, uh, yun lang po yung uh, final uh, question. Sana Sala na salamat po. Sagutin niyo na lang po yung, ano, yung query ni Congressman Gaite. I am complete. I am already done 100% for the draft uh, bill for our charter, Your Honor. Thank you. Anyway, uh, in case Congressman Gaite has further questions, you can always call you up. Uh, Congressman Dimaporo, Congressman Dimaporo, is next Mr. to ask questions. Mr. Can you hear me now? Yes, Tito, Tito, we can hear you. Yes, uh, uh, I just want to find out the status of Bangun, Marawi. Uh, uh, what is the status now of uh, Bangun, Marawi, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, the uh, rehabilitation uh, of Marawi City is on track, and uh, we can uh, state that. Uh, the rehabilitation will be completed uh, by December of 2021. In the most affected area where there are uh, a number of structures, public infrastructures that would be constructed, uh, the construction is ongoing and uh, a lot of projects uh, are now uh, uh, being uh, constructed and more will follow uh, uh, by, within the month and uh, by next month, uh, Your Honours. All of this will be completed by December of 2021, Your Honours. Well, uh, 
Mr. Chairman, that is good to hear. Um, so I, uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, the information, but uh, can we have some documents on that? Uh, uh, can it be sent to my office, Mr. Chairman? Uh, we'll comply, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So uh, that is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Dimaporo. <clears throat> Next to ask questions is Congressman, Congressman Franz Castro. Congressman Franz Castro. Congressman Franz Castro. Congresswoman Sherry Antan. Congresswoman Sherry Antan. Um, good morning, po. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I just would like to ask um, NHA uh, regarding the, the update of the um, relocation uh, sites for Daram, uh, Zumaraga, and Talalora, and um, the area of Marabot. Um, these are areas under the rehabilitation, under yung sa Yolanda, yung sa Yolanda pa na time. Um, I would like to ask about the update. Please answer. Uh, Your Honor, I have only one information with respect to Marabot. Uh, we are now terminating the project Marabot and hopefully to enter into a negotiated contract so that the project will start. The other projects, Your Honor, I will verify that on the records and we will submit to the committee and to the Honorable Congresswoman. Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang humagtanong sa tagal-tagal ho ng, uh, kasi before pa, I, when I was in the province as governor, nagre-reklamo na ho talaga kami about sa contractor at saka yung construction mismo dun sa municipality of Marabot. But then wala ho talagang dinidefend pa ng NHA uh, dun sa regional manager yung situation nung Marabot. Pero bakit ngayon lang ho na iti-terminate siya na sobrang tagal? I mean, from way back 2013 or let's say 2014 eh ngayon lang na 2020 natin magagawa yung pag-terminate. Bakit po ang situation? Uh, sorry, Your Honor. We would have wanted really to give time to the contractor to recover. But at the end of the day, since they cannot recover, we finally terminated the project. Okay, so um, is this, uh, parang ibig sabihin po nito na same area po natin ilalagay yung project, yung uh, relocation, still in barangay, in that specific barangay. Kasi ho, yung barangay na yan, siya yung pinaka-remote uh, area among, kasi lahat ng 25 barangays, uh, yung 24 po nasa car line. So, hindi ko ho maintindihan kung bakit lahat ng relocation ilalagay dun kung saan yung naka-interior pa siya na barangay. So, ang pamasahe at saka yung logistics ng mga tao, mas mahihirapan po. So, uh, is there a chance that we can... Uh, consider other areas na, na nasa labas na or nasa car line na po. Please answer. We will coordinate your honor with the local government unit so that upon the choice and preference of the mayor, we will comply. All right. Okay. But make uh, sure you, you so but much. make sure you coordinate with the congressman also, okay? Not just with the LGU. That's correct, your honor. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to request sana sa NHA kung pwedeng makipag-coordinate sila sa amin. Kasi I believe we already have um, the province purchase uh, lot area intended for the relocation uh, as relocation site. Pero hindi lang tinanggap at that time ng NHA. Kasi ibabalik ko lang ho, dati nagsabi si NHA right after ng Yolanda na whoever ang makakaunang makaprovide ng, lo ng lote, automatically yun yung maunang mabibigyan ng housing. But when, as governor, talagang bumili agad kami ng lupa at 50 pesos per square meter doon. Nung dinala ko na ho yung documents sa NHA, ni hindi man lang sinilip o tiningnan yung dokumento. But then, nagulat pa sila, telling, uh, well, they told me at that time that um, uh, paano ho nakabili yung province ng 50 pesos per square? Dapat daw ang presyo nasa 200 answer thank you your honor uh in so far as the site selection in the and past then, are concerned 
Yes, Sherry, can you hear can you hear us? You being uh, Mr. Chair. Can you hear us? I think your inter internet is unstable. Mr. Chair. I mean, continue, continue with the answer. In, in so far as I said, selection of Marabot, your honor is concerned, I confirm that what, that was an error on the part of the previous management of NHA, your honor. That is why right now we will be coordinating with the LGU. In fact, we have already coordinated with them and they are open to implement the project in coordination with the NHA. So, so right. Pong Sumantan, they admit it is a, a shortcoming of the previous uh, head of the agency. But right now, they will try to rectify that mistake by coordinating more efficiently with the LGU and, of course, with the office of the Congresswoman. Any more questions? Congresswoman yes, Sherian Chan. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, please, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to ask NHA to have a close coordination with my uh, district office also. And um, second, ho, ito yung last ko po na, na request. Um, I believe uh, Secretary Del Rosario, General Del, Del Rosario is our co ords in Region 8 as far as EO70 is concerned. So, um, uh, meron ho kami, nag-meeting ho kami ng LCAC in the province and we identified uh, a certain area in Pinabakdao um, dun sa kung ilalagyan ho ng uh, proposed namin na Peace and Prosperity House Village for the rebel returnees. Kasi ngayon ho, uh, ang province nag-allocate on top of what we give sa national dun sa mga rebel returnees, nag-allocate din ho ang probinsya ng around 100,000 as support dun sa mga nagbalik loob. Pero ang request ho namin, uh, pag nagbigay ho kami noon, um, mas maigi po sana kung mailagay natin sila sa safer area na monitor din ho ng uh, military uh, kahit pa paano. At saka meron ho tayong facility na paglalagyan sa kanila. Kasi um, recently, this uh, first quarter of this year, meron ho dalawang, uh, meron ho kami mga surrendery na missing uh, hindi na ho namin sila mahanap. Well, allegedly, na, parang pinatay ho sila. So, uh, nahihirapan ho kami mag-convince eh, kung ganito ho ang parang paulit-ulit na mangyayari. So, uh, we would like to request sana kasi si DAR uh, tumulong na rin sa amin sa pagbigay ng lupa. Uh, they will allocate a certain, I think, if I'm not mistaken, more than 100 hectares na lupa na kung saan gagawing parang subdivision ng mga rebel returnees and at the same time, dun sa area na rin na yun, dun na rin yung uh, magbibigay sila ng cloa para dun sa titles na po pwedeng pagtaniman ng mga tao. Uh, ang amin lang sana, ang hihingin namin sa NHA is to allocate around 185 housing units and site development for the beneficiaries of this proposed uh, peace and Prosperity uh, Housing Village in Pinabakdao, Samar. Uh, this is halfway po from Leyte and Katbalogan City. So, malaking tulong po to, not only for my province, but the entire island of Samar, kung meron po tayong mga rebel returnees na po pwede nating i-lodge doon sa, sa area ng yun. Um, uh, please, like please, wrap, please wrap up, Kung Suman. Please wrap up. Pakirap up like lang. Please wrap up. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to ask Anna for the commitment of NHA regarding this. Um, the NHA, please respond. Yes, Your Honor, we commit. Okay, uh, Congressman Sherry Antan, they commit. Okay. Thank, thank you very uh, much, thank Congressman you, Mr. Tan. Chair. Yes. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. I, I, I will just wait for NHA yes. for um, the Anyway, anyway uh, just coordinate with their, their office directly. They have, they have pledged that they will get in touch with your office or they will wait for your staff to get in touch with them. Thank you very much, Congressman Sherry Antan. Next is uh, Congressman Kiko Benitez. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me in the hall? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, since my, li my, my time is, is very short and there are many others uh, after me who will ask, I'll try to ask my questions all at once and then I will wait for the responses. Um, uh, my first question actually is to uh, NHA. You know, uh, uh, in accordance with what was presented in the in the PowerPoint that that I saw, 
um, one of the major thrusts is the return of um, of our residents to their provinces no, as part of the Balik Probinsya um, program. So my question for NHA really is what are the plans to, to, to uh, help those returning to their, to their uh, home provinces, for example, from congested, highly urbanized NCR areas, for example, um, into a, reset, a kind of resettlement program? What, what, are, what is NHA doing in terms of uh, capacitating uh, LGUs in the localities to, to ensure that they receive um, the new residents uh, in adequate no, uh, housing facilities, because otherwise, obviously, they won't stay, even if you resettle them. Um, that would be my first question to NHA. Uh, then my second question is actually to, to Secretary Del Rosario. No? Um, napansin ko, napakalaki ng nawala na, na, na budget against yung sa hiningi ninyo sa, sa DBM. So I would also like to manifest my, my, my concern just like uh, uh, Congresswoman Brosas, uh, uh, Chair Strike Revilla, and uh, Congresswoman Jam Jam Baronda. No? Um, there really should be more budget for, for, for the housing sector. Having said that, um, there are two things that, that, that are mentioned in the PowerPoint that I would like to know, given the budget cuts, how uh, Secretary Del Rosario will cope with. No? The first is, the housing one-stop uh, shop centers um, that is both a thrust but also uh, uh, listed as something that will uh, suffer because of the budget cuts. So, nasan ho tayo sa establishment ng one-stop shops um, for housing and the digitalization of the permitting processes para mas mabilis because this is obviously part of the problem uh, that we've always had in terms of the backlog of the housing. The second question I had, sir, is uh, Secretary Del Rosario, Mr. Chair, is that um, you have listed a pilot program for a PPP on government idle lands. I guess my other question is given the, 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 the decline in the budget, um, the PPP might be a way to, to um, uh, jumpstart you know, uh, some of that uh, shortfall. So what are the obstacles that you have found in your pilot project for the PPP on government, idle government lands? And uh, what might legislation or even in the GAA be, be written in to ensure um, that uh, given the, the next year's uh, implementation of these types of projects um, to, to help us with our backlog uh, that, that Congress can help and provide? You lang, Mr. Chair. Bishop, two questions, answer. one to NHA and uh, two questions to one question to NHA and two questions to Dishud and Secretary Del Rosario. Thank you, Madam Chair. For for NHA, Your Honor, the immediate response would be upon return of the BP2 beneficiaries to the respective provinces, they will be enjoying six months to twelve months, meaning one year rental subsidy from DSWD. That's the first. That's the immediate. The second is. Right after the expiration of 12 months, NHA will package the RAP LGU amounting to 25 million or 50 million for our housing intervention. And the third is a long-term intervention to really package the housing program for the beneficiaries of Balik Provincia Bagong Pagasa. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on the uh, other question of the Honorable Congressman, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to state that uh, with regards to the housing one-stop shop, uh, this is highly dependent on databasing. And we, don't, we need uh, computers and systems in order to make this run to make the one-stop shop uh, effective and efficient. Since we do not have a capital outlay, uh, the, this really is an issue on the part of our department to implement the housing one-stop shop. On the uh, PPP to jumpstart our housing project, uh, that is a, uh, this is a very good uh, 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 initiative that we can do so that we can really jumpstart the project. But this is highly dependent on the proposed bill. That the, I think that's part of, of the question, the proposed bill now pending in Congress, and that's the National Housing Production Development Act. This bill will uh, allocate a fixed amount every year for 20 years for the housing sector. 
if this will be approved, then we can be certain that uh, the budget allocated to the housing department will be uh, enough or adequate enough to fulfill our mandate in the 20-year period and bridge the housing need or housing gap in our country. Uh, Your Honor. Uh, Follow-up question, Madam Chair, if I may. Is last it, question. Uh, last question. Uh, Sorry. Yes, last question. Last so, um, am, am, I, am I clear, sir, uh, Secretary Del Rosario, that the only obstacle for PPP that you find at the moment is a budget question? Uh, there are no other legal hurdles that you would like to, to highlight uh, for intervention? Uh, actually, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if we will strictly follow the CLUP and the LSP, the local charter plans of all LGUs nationwide, we can identify idle government lots, whether owned by national government and the local government, and undertake PPP projects in those uh, locations or sites. So uh, the key here now is the uh, updating of the uh, comprehensive land use plan and eventually the local charter plan of all LGUs nationwide. If we have that data and we have the budget, to implement housing development in all those areas who need housing, we can effect it and uh, do the housing development because we have the budget and we have the structure, so to speak, uh, Your Honours. Thank you. That's it. Thank, thank, you thank, thank, you, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just, just, to, just to once again, uh, uh, some, uh, finally, just uh, repeat my manifestation that uh, the one-stop shop is is part of the mandate of, of the of the department it's in the law that created them and it it will help not only uh, uh socialized housing for for our urban core but it will also help housing sector in general to be a, a really quick way to to be part of the build 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 uh, multiplier effect for our economic recovery so uh, mr chair to to increase the budget of the Department of uh, Human Settlements and Urban Development, um, I would like to manifest my support uh, very strongly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Congressman Kiko Benitez. Next interpolate is Congresswoman Euphemia Koliamat. Congresswoman Euphemia Koliamat. Kafemia. Congresswoman Koliamat. How about Congressman Carloic Sarate? Congressman Carlos Sarate? Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Congressman Sarate. Please proceed, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, magandang tanghali po sa ating uh, uh, pamilya ng Dishud. Siguro ang unang katanungan ko lang, Mr. Chair, no? Uh, may gitatlong taon na ata. Uh, at nagkaroon na, nagkaroon na lang ng bagong departamento wala pang katiyakan ang uh, nangyayari doon sa sa Marawi no uh, after it was raised to the ground so uh, ano ho ang uh, plano ng uh, kagawaran dito at ano po ang timeline nila for this Mr. Chair for the recovery of uh, Marawi please answer uh, uh, Mr. Chair uh, we uh, are saying that the uh, Marawi rehabilitation will be completed by December of 2021 the different public Infrastructures are now ongoing in the most affected area and even outside the ground zero of Marawi City. So again, I would like to state that uh, it will be completed by December of 2021, Your Honours. Uh, when we say uh, by Mr. Chair, by uh, December of 2021, ibig uh, ba sabihin nito, makakabalik na ang ating mga uh, displaced na mga kababayan na mga Maranao sa uh, kanilang mga nasira ng mga residensya at uh, makapamumuhay na sila uh, eventually ng uh, normal, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, actually as early as July of last year, we have allowed the IDPs to return to, the, uh, to their uh, destroyed uh, uh, properties uh, provided they secure a building permit from the local government units. And once provided with a building permit, they can uh, uh, start the construction of respect, their respective uh, commercial as well as uh, housing units. Uh, for those uh, residents who do not have the capacity 
for the construction and restoration of their respective houses or buildings. Uh, there is a compensation uh, bill pending in Congress, and hope, hopefully it will be uh, approved as soon as possible time so that uh, assistance, financial assistance, can be given to those uh, affected uh, families, Your Honors. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Secretary. Uh, of course, inaantay pa natin ng magiging uh, resulta nitong, uh, although delayed na rin, no, na compensation bill. But uh, in, in relation to that, uh, I uh, read, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, last August 28, 2020, uh, Secretary De Rosario signed a memorandum of agreement with private contract stores no, uh, for the repair or, and rehabilitation of uh, dalawa hong masjid at uh, mosque sa Marawi City. No? Uh, ang uh, tanong ko po, uh, saan po nagmumula ang pondo para dito uh, at kung uh, uh, inaalaw na pondohan ang repair and rehabilitation ng uh, nasirang mga uh, masjid at uh, mosque? No? Siyempre gusto nating mangyari yun. Uh, pwede rin po bang gamitin ito para doon habang wala pa yung compensation na ipapasang batas ay gamitin ito sa pagpapatayo at uh, pag uh, rehabilitate ng ating mga nasirang mga kabahayan diyan sa Marawi City Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ang uh, ginamit natin na uh, pondo para sa construction ng mga majid or mosque in Marawi City came from uh, private uh, donation and it is specific for the uh, restoration or reconstruction repair of uh, the different majids. Uh, wala tayong uh, nakuha na pondo para sa pag-reconstruct ng mga bahay sa loob ng most affected area. But instead, we got from uh, UN Habitat uh, a certain amount and uh, we are constructing 1,500 uh, housing units which will be given for free, house and lot for the IDPs in the most affected area. Uh, for those families who do not have uh, lots to speak of, uh, but they were residing inside the uh, most affected area before the seeds. So since they will not be allowed to go back because uh, they do not have lots and they were uh, living in danger zones, they, uh, they will be given first priority in, uh, uh, to be given with uh, uh, a grant of house and lot, uh, Your Honours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yun po bang uh, sinabi ninyong pondo no, na para pagpaayos doon? Hindi po ba yan yung, yung, uh, yung uh, pondo na ginamit dyan ay nagmumula sa escrow fund uh, created under uh, the Balanced Housing and Development Program Am uh, Amendments Act or yung Republic Act 10884, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that is right, uh, uh, Your Honor. And this is the donation portion uh, there are two things, the, the actual project implementation for social housing and uh, the, the donation portion is a 20% uh, percent of that amount. And this is uh, being used for land development for socialized housing and to help uh, calamity-stricken areas uh, uh, affected, uh, whether it, it is... Uh, uh, man-made or due to natural causes, uh, Your Honor? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, nabasa ko rin po kasi yung uh, uh, isang board resolution, no? uh, 965 series of 2017, na in the use of that escrow account, no? uh, sinabi doon that uh, if the construction was, is with a, through a third party of non-saleable and non-recoverable housing projects, on land owned by the government or donated lands as, as housing for the AFP, public housing, rehabilitation of calamity-stricken communities, etc. No? Kaya nabanggit ko po yan uh, dahil if, uh, hindi, kahit hindi ko nakita doon that it, na, uh, religious facilities will be allowed to be rehabilitated and uh, for the reconstruction. No? Uh, nat natanong ko dahil yung mga kung sinabi po ninyo na calamity stricken area ay eh, more, more than the calamity na although man made no calamity rin ang nangyayari doon sa ating mga kababayan no na hanggang ngayon ay hindi pa sila nakabalik no uh, why can't we if we can use this for example you justified it no uh, na pwedeng gamitin ito Mr. Chair doon sa uh, even if it's not mentioned in the uh, board resolution 
uh, bakit hindi pwedeng gamitin ito doon sa ating mga mahihirap rin nakababayan uh, sa Marawi, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honors, it is for common facilities. Uh, individual houses uh, are not covered because uh, uh, that uh, donation is for the repair, the construction of common facilities, uh, Your Honors. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, ano na lang, in relation to that, Mr. Chair, may uh, the good secretary inform us uh, how much is that escrow account for now? And uh, can, uh, for purposes of our plenary deliberation, uh, pwede po natin hingin no? uh, ang, uh, ang uh, kabuoang report patungkol sa escrow account na yan. At uh, if I may ask, uh, was there already a, 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 uh, an audit conducted by, for example, by the COA on how Be that escrow account was expended or spent in the past years, Mr. Chair. Before po, the Secretary will answer the, the question of Honorable Sarate, can you please also wrap up because you have already consumed your three minutes uh, time. Yes, uh, I will just wrap up. Uh, Mr. Answer. Chair, will just uh, submit Chair. the documentations uh, being requested by Congressman Sarate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so bilang panghuli na lang siguro Madam Chair no as a short manifestation uh, sinusuportahan ko yung mga sinabi ng ating mga kasamahan kanina na sana sa panahon ng pandemya ng COVID ay uh, yung uh, mga demolition ay uh, mahinto muna no uh, in consideration na hirap na hirap na nga ang ating mga mamamayan. Second no uh, totoo Madam Chair napakarami pa ring backlog sa ating uh, housing uh, sector no at dapat ito ay uh, uh, ating pagtuunan ng pansin no at uh, ang pondo dapat ay uh, ating ma-prioritize para itong uh, housing backlog na ito ay ma-address na no uh, uh, previous administrations ito na yung problema hanggang ngayon tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung problema at uh, um, ito ang isang naging dahilan noon kaya daw magtayo tayo ng isang bagong departamento no para sa usapin na ito and uh, at ako ay uh, uh, tinitingnan natin no kung talaga bang ito ay within na uh, uh, this administration ay ma-address. And finally, um, uh, Madam Chair, no, uh, ako ay uh, parang uh, napatunayan yung aming sinabi noon na pag nagkakaroon ng bagong departamento, bagong bureaucracy, ang nalagay talaga sa alanganin dyan yung security of tenure of our uh, uh, state workers. no, Dahil sa mga reorganisasyon ay... Uh, uh, ang, ang iba sa kanila o hindi man marami sa kanila ay mawala ng trabaho no? at uh, dapat ito rin ay ating uh, uh, mabusising tingnan no? uh, lalo ngayon may mga pending bills pa dyan no? in the creation of other uh, departments no? na halos bawat problema ay ginagawa natin ng bagong departamento na hindi naman talaga natutugunan yung ugat ng mga uh, problema ng bawat sektor so yun na lang Madam Chair maraming salamat po sa panahon at maraming salamat sa ating pamilya ng Bishod for uh, the answers uh, in this uh, briefing. Thank you so much, Congressman uh, Carlos Sarate. The next to interpolate is uh, Congressman uh, Rufus Rodriguez. You are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And a pleasant good afternoon to uh, Secretary Ed uh, Del Rosario and to uh, GM uh, uh, Escalada, June Escalada, Good afternoon. Uh, let me first uh, express my thanks to the good secretary and the general manager for a job well done, working hard for the interests of uh, housing and human settlements and urban development in our country. I have uh, seen them work and uh, as representative of the, of the second district, again, the order, I have seen uh, their work uh, for our uh, people. And uh, they are also complemented by a very good uh, group of uh, very veteran uh, uh, officials like uh, Regional Director uh, Jun Teves, a veteran uh, Regional Director of the NHA, uh, working hard uh, for the best interests of Region 10 and Kage uh, and the Oro City. And of course, uh, the Provincial Director also, Fe and Cheta. Now, I would like to ask now, because we are trying, you know, every year, Housing has always been left behind whenever we have the budget year in and year out. And that is really the sorry state of uh, the budgeting system of our, of our country. And every year I have to come out both in the committee and in the plenary for the increase and augmentation of the uh, 
uh, housing program of our country and now with the Department of Housing and now with the NHA. Now, therefore, I would like to know from uh, the Secretary, uh, for housing itself, uh, how much was submitted by the Department to the DBM and how much was given in the NEP and how much was not given to our uh, our housing program of our country? Secretary, you may answer. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honours. Actually, for 2021 budget, we requested for a total of 77 billion, and we were only given allocated uh, 3.68 billion, just 4.7 percent of what we have requested. And if we will uh, uh, compute this based on the total budget, it's only 0.08 percent of the total national budget, Your Honours. Madam Chair, what a disgusting, a disgusting response of our national government to the needs of our housing sector through the Department of Housing. Can you imagine that 77 billion is requested because that is really needed for our housing development so that we can give dignity as required by our constitution to give each Filipino human dignity. Now, how can a Filipino have human dignity if he has no small, small piece, small piece of land and a shelter on his head. And that is why, Mr. Ch Madam, Madam Chair, we, are, we should join hands together and in the plenary, and even before the plenary, increase from 3.6, a misery, 3.6 billion out of the 77. He's the only agency that I have seen where the slash, where the amount slash was practically making it negative. In other words, uh, uh, almost zero, almost zero. Three is not very far from zero. And that is right, Madam Chair. I would therefore manifest that let us correct this. We can never solve housing and give human dignity to our people if this is the kind of budget that we give. So that is one, Mr. Ch Madam Chair. Now, I would like to therefore also request that because there's only 3.6 billion, how, can, how much can we give to our regions, like Region 10? Then how much can we give to the city of Golden Friendship, again, the Oro City? Practically very, very small. It cannot implement anything there. That is why I have the following request to the Secretary. As we fight for more budget, we would like to request basic uh, needs of our people in Cagayan de Oro. One, we need to have a low-rise building in uh, Cagayan de Oro in my district. Uh, we have never had a, a, a low-rise or even a, a, a medium-rise. So we are only needing a five-story low-rise building, which may cost 40 million, and uh, it will give about uh, 80 uh, uh, housing to 80 informal sector of our country, of our city. We have not uh, we have this kind of a of a, uh, a budget. That is why Cagayan de Oro is lagging behind in providing housing for our informal sector. So that's one, a low-rise building. So I'm very glad that uh, the good secretary Ed is is jotting this down because when he writes it down, I am sure it will be implemented. Uh, number two. We also like to request, a, uh, we, we first we thank the NHA, a, uh, 80, billion, uh, 80 million was, was given to the resettlement in Balubal and we are now finishing uh, the uh, cementing and paving of the resettlement project with Gawad Kalinga. But I would like to ask that we have another resettlement because Kage and the Oro, there are now many demolitions and there are still Sendong victims and we need a resettlement program uh, in Barangay Balubal in the amount of only 50 million because we have some properties of the city government which we can use and this will be to develop and give uh, some uh, some units in this area, about 50 million. Third, Mr. Chairman, and to Secretary Ed and to my good friend, uh, Meng Hapon Kang uh, Junis Kalada, uh, and my fellow Mindan now known, uh, you know, so we hope that, uh, you know, June, we are able to get more from the DBM because, alam mo, and DBM is known as the Department of Budget Management. But to us, Mindanao knows, it is called DBM, Jutai Bahay ng Mindanao. Mukala, small in, in Regulative 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 Regulative
We have a number. for Sendong victims and there are still uh, those uh, Sendong victims who have no homes and we would like to have, for example, at least we started 200 units with about uh, about 200 million uh, pesos. Uh, I don't see the secretary is writing this time. 200 million. Because uh, <laughs> we would like to have the secretary this is a, big, a very good man. The secretary and also June Escalada that we need 20, 200 million so that we can finish the land is it's just there, no? It's about uh, also 80 hectares, 80 million. Nanjan lang, wala pa rin. And finally, lastly, Madam Chair, you know, I thank Regional Director June Tevez, uh, Provincial Di Provincial Director Fe Ancheta, because every, if there is, you know, he cannot evade this. There are fires that happen. And when there is a fire, you know, the NHA is always there. And they're able to give assistance to those whose houses are burned completely and partially, and there is 30,000 waiting for them, and this gives and lifts them up because when you have a fire, you lose everything. And so therefore, there is from 10,000 to 30,000 depends on the evaluation, and they are given. May I request that uh, a revolving fund of the 3 million had already been uh, uh, consumed, plus the need for another 7 million. We would like to have a revolving fund in the region and in the city of 10 million pesos for the emergency housing assistance program, Madam Chair. So that, oh, that this is all my request, but I would like to tell the Secretary, these requests are not much, but we are saying that for the entire country, all congressmen unite together and be able to support the successful implementation by Secretary Del Rosario and Eunice Calada of the housing program of our country. And therefore, in the plenary, we fight we fight as one to increase the budget of the Department of Housing, Human Settlements, and Urban Development. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you to our dear Secretary and our General Manager. Good afternoon to all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to the very dynamic, no, outstanding Representative Rufus Rodriguez. Isa po siya sa mga hinahangaan ko dito sa miyembro ng Kamara. Uh, and your dancing partner, Madam Chair. <laughs> Uh, uh, Secretary, can you please answer uh, the manifestation of the good uh, Congressman? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we will continuously engage with uh, Congressman uh, Rufus Rodriguez and uh, we can uh, provide assistance uh, within uh, our budget. Uh, of course, uh, he is uh, the favorite of GM Escalada, so GM Escalada will uh, work closely with his uh, office, uh, Your Honours. Thank you so much, Secretary. The next to interpolate is uh, Congresswoman uh, Kulyamat. Congresswoman Kuliana, Kulyamat, you're recognized. Last call, Congresswoman Kulyamat. Okay, I would like to call Representative Marsha Lusotan for his interpolation. Madam Chair. Yes, you are recognized. Uh, good done. Uh, uh, sa ating mga secretary at saka sa family ng Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, yung tanong ko lang, Madam Chair, uh, paano yung adjustment ngayon ng ating departamento na kung na, yung SANEP 3.6 lang at saka yung current na budget from 7.8 billion naging 5.4 so ano yung adjustment suppose uh, ito lang ang pwede ma, ma budget ngayon na taon for 2021 3.6 so ano po yung maapiktuhan ng mga programa uh, Madam Chair should please answer. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honours, uh, actually because of the uh, reduction, uh, we have removed some uh, PPAs in uh, our uh, uh, proposed uh, budget for 2021, uh, Your Honours. 
So we have uh, prioritized and removed the other projects that uh, will not require uh, prioritization for 2021, uh, Your Honours. Uh, actually, the following uh, programs will be adversely affected by this budget cut. The full operationalization of the Department Central and 16 Regional Offices, the establishment of the Housing One-Stop Processing Centers, support to policy formulation and technical assistance, human settlements and urban development program, motor vehicle replacement and acquisition, acquisition program, and our, of course, our COVID-19 uh, response, Your Honors. Congressman Lusotan, uh, you have questions? Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Madam Chair, I would like to manifest my support to, for the increase of the budget of the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development. So, sana na magkaisa tayo na may balik yung budget. Kahit ang um, budget lang nila na 7.8, siguro uh, uh, Secretary, kung may balik lang yung 7.8 sa yung current natin budget, kaysa operate tayo on 3.6 billion. So, Madam Chair, uh, yun lang ay this representation support for the increase of the budget of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Kong, uh, Representative Lusotaan. I would like to again uh, call uh, Congresswoman Kulyamat if she is available. Congressman Kulyamat? With that, uh, she's not available. I would like to next interpolate is uh, DS Geogracia Civiliano. You are recognized, DS. DS Civiliano. I think he is not available. Let us proceed to the second one. Yes, since uh, they are not available, or maybe, can you please check the net connection? I'd like to suspend the, the hearing, Muna. So we will we, we, we'll just proceed with our second round. Then la, the last to interpolate, Congresswoman Arlene Brosas, you are recognized. For that, tawagan niyo muna sila, basahin ko muna yung ibang mga katanungan na baka pwedeng sagutin ng mga kasamahan natin sa dishod. Ano po ba ang mga plano ng departamento ninyo para maipapatupad ang Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa Program? Jim Escalada, you may answer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, incidentally, I'm also the executive director of the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa pursuant to EU114. Three things, Your Honor. Number one, in relation to housing, is that upon the transfer and the dispatch of our beneficiaries to their respective provinces, if wala silang bahay doon, Your Honor, DSWD will provide six months to 12 months rental subsidy. That's very clear. Second is the NHA will also package the RAP LGU if and when we move to the immediate time of housing requirements. And the third is we will have the full package development of house and lot for all the beneficiaries of Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa. The third intervention is a long-term intervention, and this is something recoverable. Everyone has to pay an affordable monthly amortization of our housing in the provinces. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pangalawang tanong po, ano na ang maaari ninyong may ulat hingil sa plano ng departamento ninyo para sa rehabilitasyon ng Marawi? 2017 pa po nangyari ang Marawi Siege Ngunit sa nakaraang taon lamang, nalagdaan ang kasunduan sa pagitan ni Belia 
Vita Land Corporation at Pro Friends. Tama po ba ito? Uh, Madam Chair, ang uh, nilagdaan po natin ay yung pag-reconstruct uh, at repair lang ng mga majids. Yung construction ng mga public in infrastructures, pati yung mga temporary and permanent settlements, as early as 2017, nagsisimula na po yun, Your Honors. Thank you. Ang sunod, ano ang plano ng inyong ahensya sa mga susunod na taon? Hindi ba masyadong matagal ang dalawampung taon na programa para sa pabahay at urbanisadong kaunlaran, housing and urban development strategic plan sa mga nangangailangan na ngayon? Paano makakasiguro na hindi papalitan ang plano kapag nagpalit ng administrasyon? Uh, ang, uh, uh, Madam Chair, yung uh, National uh, Strategic Plan for 20 years, uh, iyan ang magsisilbing uh, model at uh, uh, blueprint ng uh, housing sector for the next 20 years. And uh, uh, para pag-alis ng uh, present administration in two years' time, the next administration will have a template, uh, a blueprint where to go through or to follow up so that in 20 years uh, we can have a more uh, uh, progressive uh, housing sector and we can uh, address the needs of our uh, the Filipino families who will wish to have a house of their own in 20 years. It is 20 years uh, also because we could not get the budget uh, in one lump sum. Uh, it's, too, it's too big, too huge, and the capacity of our uh, shelter agencies to undertake the production of all these projects would entail uh, so much uh, uh, time and uh, resources. So 20 years is a more doable, realistic uh, time frame, uh, Your Honors. Um, sunod na tanong ng mga kasamahan ko, Secretary. Goal 11 ng Sustainable Development Goals ng United Nations na ang ating mga tahanan ay ligtas, sustainable, matibay at para sa lahat. Ano ang ginagawa ng inyong departamento para makamit ang mga layunin na ito, Secretary? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honors, uh, naka-align ang PDP Development Plan sa Sustainable Development Goals ng, uh, ng uh, ating bansa. At uh, with regards to housing, uh, it is uh, adapted to the uh, climate change. And we are strictly following the uh, different hazards whenever we uh, uh, plan for any housing development in any area. So nakapaloob po dyan yung ating mga hazards so that we can ensure it will be sustainable and uh, resilient. So naka-align po tayo sa ang housing sector sa development goals ng uh, ating masa. Thank you uh, so much, Secretary, for that. I think uh, DS uh, De Gracia Civiliano is already um, available. You are recognized, DS Civiliano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, since housing ang pinag-usapan, uh, hindi man lang na pag-aaralan yung ano regarding yung paggamit ng ano ng kawayan sa housing para mas makamura tayo. Um, Secretary, you may answer or GM Escalada, you may answer. Thank you, Your Honor. Actually, we just accredited early this year one technology that is a replacement for bars and rebars. And this technology is using kawayan. So that will impact to the cost as well as to the efficiency of construction time because Kawayan is available anytime and anywhere in the country today. But we are reserved, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, in deploying that right now because we need to have a marketing strategy and communication strategy within which people will be accepting the technology of Kawayan because the replacement of bars and rebars as Kawayan may be not culturally and socially acceptable to the many of our kababayans right now. Kasi, pag makita lang kawayan as replace, replacement of the bars and rebars, baka tingnan naman nila nga, substandard yan kasi kawayan. 
But the truth of the matter is that we tested the compressive strength of Kawayan. It is even harder than any other technology presented at the ITEC right now. So, Your Honor, uh, Congressman, we have already studied that and we accredited one technology. We only need to market and educate our own people. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you so much. Uh, D.S. Civilano, may, may tanong ka pa? Madam Chair? Yes, you may proceed. Yeah, but if the problem is uh, marketing, since uh, it's the government who's going to fund this, pwede bang pagtuunan natin ng pansin, ipush natin. Because uh, it's the only way to, ano, to uh, minimize yung, ano, yung cost. And the uh, raw material, it, the materials, available in every corner of the Philippines. And uh, para makatulong din tayo sa mga, sa mga may kawayan. Kasi and, and, uh, marami tayong kawayan, but only we are not, ano, we, we are not uh, uh, using it. So may suggest also that uh, if you have a problem with technology, can we ask the, the OST to to uh, to uh, to study this uh, this uh, raw mat uh, this raw material like the kawayan para matugunan natin yung mga ibang pangangailangan ng mga uh, na mga problema sa housing. GM Escalada, please answer. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, actually, there's no problem with technology because the OST, DPWH, and all other seven line agencies are members of the ITEC. Uh, committee. We already accredited that as a very good technology. So we are just very careful right now in deploying it. Because for one, I have already tested that in one of our facilities in Nae Cavite. And the technology of bamboo is already there as a model, model unit. So if and when that can be a very good uh, success story or honor, we are ready to deploy our technology using Kawayan. Kasi Madam Chair, ang sana nakikita ko sing ngayon, uh, like the, the use of kawayan, ini-import pa natin eh. Marami tayong ini-import na pangangailangan ng, na pwedeng gamitin sa housing. What I'm saying is, we can be self-sufficient. Ba't tayo nag import Eh, dami na, supposed to be, dami nating kawayan. So, sa tingin ko, Madam Chair, uh, dapat pagtuunan to ng pansin. Yung pag-de-develop uh, pag ng kawayan as a as a material for housing of the government. Kung ang isang magiging rason na naman nila dyan, mas, maha, mas mahal ang kawayan natin kaysa sa labas. But the thing is, if we believe in the program, we should subsidize. Parang bigyan natin ng ano, do, domestic preference yung mga bibili natin. Para naman matulungan natin yung industriya, we can create uh, employment para sa mga tao. Yan, sana uh, naman. Chair, we will explore that uh, uh, option or possibility. Uh, Thank you so much, Secretary. Madam Chair, since hindi ko masyadong marinig yung mga sagot, may request that uh, yung, yung, ano, yung uh, minutes of what, what I, uh, yung diniscuss natin about Kawayan, can, can, uh, uh, can the, the, the housing authority give me yung, ano, yung, yung study nila para we can, uh, para I can, ano, I can study it also. Secretary, you may answer. Uh, Madam Chair, we will submit the ITEC result for the uh, appreciation of the uh, Honorable Congressman. Um, D.S. Civilano, um, according to Secretary uh, Del Rosario, he will uh, submit the ITEC report for your perusal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, D.S. Civilano. The, ne the next to interpolate, I would like to call Representative Brosas for second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. Brosas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, balikan ko lang yung question ko kanina, kaugnay po doon sa pandibulakan. Madam Chair, according to NHA Bulacan, it will take two months to process the certificate of award for the second batch of around 500 to 800 beneficiaries. Ngayon po, um, dahil isang taon na yung lumipas, ang sinabi kanina, ilan po ba yung sinabi kanina na in-award na o na-process na na nabigyan ng certificate of award? at entry pass.
Uh, GM Escalada, please uh, answer. 300 beneficiaries, more or less, Your Honor. Mr. Ch uh, Madam Chair, may we have a copy of the names ng binigyan ng award ng NHA, yung 300 na ito? That's noted, Your Honor. So, Madam Chair, meron na po bang ready report ang um, NHA kaugnay sa joint resolution number 2, katulad po ng sinasabi nyo kanina, na uh, pinagirapang ipasa po noong 2017 no na nina uh, yung joint resolution number 2 kasama po yung iba pa nating mga kasamahan dito sa kongreso do you should please answer yeah, we have a report your honor and we'll furnish the co the, cop the copy to the committee thank you so much thank you madam chair um madam chair nagsumulat po kasi tayo noong august 26 ano sa NHA at ganito rin yung ating mga tinatanong. Meron po, um, humihingi po tayo ng dialogue sana dahil may mga issues no, na kailangang i pa sa usapin ng pandi sa Bulacan. 30% lamang po dito ang may metro ng tubig at isang pabahay lang at 20% lang ang may kuryente sa lahat ng occupied. Yun po yung mga gusto sana nating i- we take up with them. But up until September 4, uh, na nag-follow up tayo, wala pa rin sagot ang NHA, Madam Chair. Pwede GM, ko bang makuha uh, ang commitment answer. ng NHA para makipag-dialogue sa atin, Madam Chair? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Actually, the dialogue can happen anytime, Your Honor. The problem really for Pandi Bulacan is that our awardees do not sign a loan documents. If and when they sign a loan documents, they can readily go to the water and power and apply it individually. The trouble with some of our, the hesitation of some of our beneficiaries, they do not apply because they want to have water and power available before transfer. That is not the case, Your Honor. They have to file a loan application, signed and approved by NHA, and present that loan documents. Kahit sa ating bahay naman, Your Honor, you have to have an occupancy permit before you apply for. To energize and to connect are two different activities. The whole site is energized, but individual application should be the key for connection of power and water, Your Honor. Sana po napaliwanag na si Congresswoman uh, Brosnan. Madam Chair, uh, I believe... I believe in what GM is saying, na kailangan ng kontrata. Kasi sinabi naman din yan ng mga taga-NHA sa huli pa naming budget deliberations nung nakaraan with NHA na inukuan ni spokesperson LC Trinidad kung saan sinabi din ng mga tao na pipirma sila sa kontrata. In fact, doon pa lang pinag-usapan na yon, Madam Chair. Ngayon, kaya nga natin tinatanong uh, kung ano na yung naging proseso Pero hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin natatapos yung pagproseso ng pag-award ng pabahay sa kanila. Tapos parang naghihintayan na uh, ibigay yung pabahay. So, Madam Chair, kaya every time kinakailangan ulit-ulit ulit na mag, mag, makipag-dialogue kahit nakakasawa na Madam Chair, pero kasi hindi naman natutugunan, Madam Chair. For example, these are concrete questions eh na pwedeng sagutin at diretsohin, di ba? Madam Chair, kaya kami humihiling ng pakikipag-usap. In fact, sinabi po yan ng mga tao na willing silang pumirma sa kontrata. Now, that is not the problem, Madam Chair. Kaya tingin ko po, kailangan humarap ang, ang NHA kaugnay dito. So, anyway, Madam Chair, on to my next question, Madam Chair. Sa kaugnay po sa... Just dado makapagal sa tondo sa bitas low rise building umaalma po yung mga residente dito dahil napakataas ng singil kada buwan bakit po 3,000 yung pinakamababang amortization nito GM Escalada can you please answer I will verify your honor if the figure is really accurate because there is no rental at NHA amounting to 3,000, Your Honor. So the, the highest number that we recollect for monthly amortization is only 1,000, Your Honor. 
So, Madam Chair, ibig sabihin 1,000 lang dapat ang amortization sa bitas. Yes, Congresswoman Brosses, wala po silang amort monthly amortization na 3,000 kasi isang libo lang po. Ang, so, baka, for the record, sinasabi niyo po yan. Okay, Madam Chair, um, sana po ay ano, um, investigahan ito ng NHA dahil importante po malaman natin ito kasi yun yung sinasabi ng mga tao doon sa Bitas, Tondo, um, na sinisingil sa kanila. Kaya Madam makanda Chair. pong narinig na for the record ay 1,000 lang dapat. No? Madam Chair, can we... Takarifek lang, no? for Congressman Brosses And, lang. Uh, Ito you are recognized, uh, Senator Bertie. Ito ba ba ito 3,000? Alam nyo ba yun na meron talagang nagpapaupa? Do you allow that? Does NHA allow people to rent out their their awarded units? We don't allow, Your Honor. That's illegal, Your Honor. So what's what's the penalty for for that? Uh, the policy that we have right here, Your Honor, is that upon recognition of NHA, that it is leased out or subrented by other persons, we will cancel right away the original award, Your Honor, and re-award it to the actual occupant. You will award it to the actual occupant. Oh, who is willing to pay 3000 and the real, real owner does not pay even 1000 Okay, okay. Uh, Representative Brosas, uh, klaro na po ba? May tanong pa? Can you please wrap, wrap up? Kasi you have already consumed your three minutes and a time. Yes, Madam Chair, um, may I request yung time ni, um, I believe sinabi po sa inyo ang time ni Congresswoman Kulyamat. If it's okay. possible to get her three minutes also. Uh, representative uh, process, yes po, for the first round, but second round na po tayo ngayon. No, I haven't. Actually, nung first round ko po, three minutes lang eh. Oh. Sige po, uh, pagbigyan na lang. <laughs> Please uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. proceed, Madam Representative Brosas. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, um, balikan ko lang po yung ano, uh, uh, yung kaugnay sa, ito po yung kaugnay sa demolition sa katuparan. Ma Madam Chair, familiar po sa People's Plan yung NHA, di ba, sa people's plan ng mga taga doon sa Katuparan? Yes, uh, James correct, Your Honor. We are familiar, Your Honor. Madam Chair, ano po ang gusto ng mga tao sa Katuparan ayon sa kanilang people's plan? Ano po ang request nila? Uh, the people you of should? Katuparan would want to have an on-site high-rise resettlement, Your Honor, on the same site where the demolition will take place anytime. We already presented, Madam Your Honor, Chair? the plans. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, repetitive process. Madam Chair, ano po yung naging tugon ng NHA kaugnay sa request na stage area, no? Habang tinatapos yung housing project na magkaroon ng staging area. Ano po daw po yung staging area na bibigay ng NHA? Uh, right now, Your Honor, we haven't thought of any staging area, Your Honor. So the op option available to our beneficiaries would be renting outside the site as soon as the demolition will take place. May cash assistance po bang ibibigay, Madam Chair? GM Escalada, please answer. Uh, there is none, Your Honor. So wala silang makukuha lahat yung mga madidisplace. Uh, we should just answer. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. In the meantime that we will be redeveloping the project as well as construction, the high-rise on-site building, Your Honor, they will be given the award already as early as they are qualified. So each and every person will have its own place to rent out. And we do not, we cannot think of a source of fund to subsidize the rental, Your Honor, because it's around 100 million per year. In the next three years, at 300 million. That is even more than enough to fund <laughs> the requirements of, of three or more buildings or six buildings, Your Honor. Madam Chair, ano po ba yung proyekto na nakatakdang ipatayo dito sa Katuparan? At ano po yung kumpanya na nakapasok dito sa proyekto ito? Gisha, please answer. 
uh, there is no company yet, Your Honor, because as it was agreed upon by NHA as well as Congressman Manny Lopez, the People's Plan proposed for a high-rise building around 17 story more or less that will house the 1,760 families, Your Honor. We intend, we recommended for the demolition and demolition order was issued by the city government Manila uh, because of its ruinous as well as dangerous physical structure already right now. In the meantime,